Hello and welcome to Life of Wolf Dog. And today we're talking about Prey Drive. Today we revisit Kamala, our baby wolf dog who is now five and a half months old, to find out how she has changed physically and mentally from the last time we saw her. We discuss the issues surrounding Prey Drive and why this is something that is set into the hard drive of the adult wolf dog. And if sometimes wolf dogs can live with smaller animals. And as it's almost Thanksgiving, we catch up with Ryuk, the rescue high content wolf dog residing in the USA, and find out how his socialization is progressing. We take a look at food possessiveness and if it can be quashed, and what behavior should be allowed, especially with all the Thanksgiving turkeys floating about right now. Welcome to Life of Wolf Dog. Welcome back to part five of Life of Wolf Dog. If you missed part one to four, you can click the info bar now to watch them. Life of Wolf Dog follows the journey of a small black phase wolf dog pup named Kamala in order to show correct upbringing and socialization so that less wolf dogs end up in rescues, often with the temperament ruined beyond help. Wolf dogs are not like dogs. They possess the raw wolf spirit and genes which make them more independent, self-serving, possessive, confrontational, and destructive than normal dogs. The higher the wolf content, the closer to the wild wolf the wolf dog becomes and can become far less easy to train and make unstressed and happy. They also bond hard to one owner, so the correct upbringing is paramount, so the puppy is never surrendered to a shelter due to fear and aggression issues. So today we return to Tuscany in Italy to be reunited with Camilla and her human Jessica, who's socializing her to overcome newly emerging fears and issues. Today we are going on a horseback ride to discuss the topic of wolf dogs and prey drive. Hi! Hi! Hi. How are you? Look, <laughs> Camilla! Come here! Camilla, she's so big! She is. She has five months now. Five months? She's German Shepherd size now. <laughs> yeah, Camilla. look at size. Camilla! You are huge! You are huge! Oh my god! So, Aneka, what do you think today we can go to horseback riding? to show about the predator instinct on the American wolf dogs. I think that's a very, very important subject yeah. because when people get a wolf yeah. dog, they don't realize how prey driven they are. So Definitely. I think a fantastic topic for today. Yeah. Yeah, and we've got amazing weather. Definitely, we so. are very lucky today. Yeah. <laughs> so Kamala, so. are you going to be a good girl or are you going to eat everything? Yeah, we'll both. see. <laughs> <laughs> okay, come on then, let's go. Let's go meet Let's the go. horse. Come on, DJ. We head over to the stable and Jessica starts to get her horse ready. We catch Kamala trying to take a few bites at the rear end of the horse. She is told off when she does this. What is obvious is that the wolf dog is naturally prey inclined due to the wolf genes yeah. telling it to hunt and kill. This is very obvious by the way she approaches the horse, not from the front, but from the rear just like a wolf. Will you join my wolf pack? The hunt is on. <laughs> well, as you know, I've teamed up with Wolf Game The Wild Kingdom, a brand new online computer game about the lives of wolves, which launched in August. This month, Wolf Game has a Thanksgiving feel with a special Thanksgiving event, as well as many other events happening online, like some of these. It's very autumn and festive, so get involved. There is a special new hero called Beige added this week. My goodness, look at him. What a suave character, smoking a cigar and all. Looks like a bit of a cad. Make sure to check him out, as well as other heroes who are constantly being updated. So pop online now and have a go. Wolf Game Wolf Hero characters are very distinctive with different backgrounds and personalities. 
The game content is constantly being updated to refresh variety and characters, so it'll always be exciting. You can register to play Wolf Game through the link, which I will write below, so you can click straight through and register now. Wolves are actually quite fearful of large prey animals, as they can get injured easily, and this will mean big problems for the wild pack survival. As Kamala is a domesticated wolf dog, this behaviour cannot be tolerated, otherwise Jessica would not be able to ride her horse safely. Kamala could be troublesome to other people's horses while on walks. Luckily Jessica's horse is very mellow and used to Kamala, so it's good training for the wolf dog pup. The fact that Lupo is overly excited doesn't help either, so Jessica gives Kamala a ball to sit and play with in order to distract her as she saddles the horse up. My horse is very quiet. He doesn't like to kick up the, the dogs. He has very good behavior. And that's great when you have to teach to the wolf dogs, you know, to be a bit respectful on the horse, but at the same time, get the confidence enough to make a ride together. Now Kamala is there. She is playing with her ball and I didn't do nothing special, just, you know, give a treat to her and say, stay calm, don't worry, we are going, no problems, don't bite. Jessica takes Kamala and Lupo into the field to see how Kamala does with her horse at a fast trot and gallop. Lupo is more excited than Kamala at this point and is not a great role model as he just wants to go for a walk. So his excitement is actually encouraging Kamala to misbehave. So Lupo is removed so that Jessica can concentrate on Kamala's training. Lupo was turning around too much to the horse and excited Kamala too much to like, a, for her was, a, okay, it's a moment for hunting. No, it's not. And so I try to tell her, Don, make conflict with the horse. Remember that your wolf dog is a sponge at this age and will copy other dogs' behavior. So make sure it's just good behavior they're seeing. After the horse riding session, we sit down to meet a very special visitor of the prey kind. This is a wild deer that come sometimes to say hello. Is a little friend of us. I'm imagining they're not that keen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they they want to eat him, right? Yeah, they want. They will eat him for sure. In a second, he can't really realize that uh, he's going to die. Yeah. So and you, you had a little bit of experience when Kamala met him a couple of times. And yeah. She, you said like she almost immediately knew mm -hmm. what to do. Mm -hmm. So even though she's a baby and nobody has shown her what to do, the instinct is there yeah. immediately. Yeah, the first instinct is to bite. When you go out at the moment with the horse she is mm -hmm. um, gets very excited mm -hmm. and again she's scared of the horse because the horse is massive and of course in the wild wolves are scared of giant prey because it's gonna kill and hurt them and it will ruin the, the pack the mm -hmm. pack won't be able to survive if they are all injured um, so it's the natural instinct is to go around the back which of course yeah. we've seen yeah. her and she was doing fighting. that especially when Lupa was turning around the horse mm. So she it was more comfortable to do that because uh, when she was just thinking, oh, that's the time, so I have to do something too. Yeah. So Lupo yeah. is building almost that tension when you have a wolf yeah. pack in the world and they all start to get excited. This prey drive is very, very hard to switch off. Definitely. Do you trust any of your wolf dogs with, say, a cat or a rabbit or a ferret? What would they do? Never. Just kill? Yeah, just kill. Yeah, so if somebody said to you, um, I want a, a high content wolf dog puppy, yeah, and <laughs> I have a cat, and the cat is already living at home, and I'm going to raise it so it knows the cat, mm -hmm. will it be nice to the cat when it grows up? It can be complicated. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, when they are little, I try it with Django and Nika both. And actually in different moments, because Nika was a year old, and she was pretty fine with a baby cat, uh, she left the food to the cat. It was a, a very extraordinary moment. 
uh, for me because uh, I learned that maybe they can understand uh, something more sometimes but uh, of course I will never trust. In the wild you'll see big mm -hmm. cats playing with baby deer and they go oh mm -hmm. she's licking the deer she love it oh well maybe she just had a big meal so she's not so interested in eating that baby deer yeah. right there mm -hmm. but she will eat the baby deer later that day or probably when she gets hungry yeah. so I believe that sometimes the instinct is slightly delayed because they're giving them food. Definitely also because of that, but also when they are younger. Yeah. Like Nika. Nika was all the time without leash, also in this kind of landscape, uh, full of boars, deers, uh, all the kind of wild animals that mm. they can really like to have in their daily menu. Mm. So I can't leave them uh, without leash here, because yeah. they're wild animals. But, uh, Nika was an interest for the first period of her life to hunt. She was too lazy to do that, but now uh, for sure she can enjoy yes. sometimes. So, maybe so maybe this is what's going to happen with Kamala because right now yes. Kamala is so sweet and lovely. She will grow into a giant wolf dog. She's going to be mm -hmm. huge. She's going to go through huge amounts of changes. When she will understand to be more powerful and fast yeah. than a deer, of course, everything will change. So I think this is really important because I think a lot of people make mistakes when they have young wolf dogs around mm -hmm. Kamala's age. Yeah. They go, oh, she's okay. She doesn't run away. She's not too naughty. She's not too aggressive. She's not too food mm -hmm. aggressive. And oh, she doesn't really touch the cat mm -hmm. at five months old. Mm -hmm. But that's a five month old puppy. Mm -hmm. And then they grow up and they change and this is when people get rid of wolf dogs because they suddenly go oh my goodness me mm -hmm. i've made a mistake as the instincts get bigger okay. you might suddenly turn around and go i don't want that wolf dog in my house anymore and what's going to happen there are very few places these animals can go to some of them end up being euthanized so many in the states get euthanized so that's why they have a lot of sanctuaries just yeah. for them after we meet Tappy, he goes to graze close to the wolf dog's enclosure and we get to see firsthand how powerful the drive is to chase and kill this poor baby deer. It is very clear that at this high percentage wolf content, it is virtually impossible to stop the natural prey drive. So generally high content should not be kept with cats or anything that represents a wiggly prey animal. As even though they may tolerate them in their puppy years, an adult wolf dog may suddenly surprise you when their prey drive kicks in one day and you can't find the cat. Getting a wolf dog to tolerate a horse though is a different matter, as the horse can generally defend itself. But for your wolf dog to walk safely with you in public when you are on horseback and to be non-threatening to other people's horses, you must start training young to avoid problems. Problematic wolf dogs will never be able to be let loose around livestock or horses once matured, as they could be shot by a farmer or a person thrown from a horse. Now, as it's in the run-up to Thanksgiving, we thought it appropriate to pop over to the USA to catch up with Ryuk and his human dad, Chad, to see how he's progressing. This is going to be a Thanksgiving pack feeding video. I have a 16-pound turkey that I've cut up that I've distributed around the area here uh, along with uh, three frozen tilapia and multiple leg quarters. Over here you see my excited crew. They're merely in the kennel for uh, shooting this intro. Uh, they all live in the house. When I do pack feedings like this, I always take the food and I spread it around uh, so the dogs have to go around and look for it. It keeps the dog from trying to lay on the pile and, and hoarding it. Uh, I also uh, like to put out more pieces of food than there are dogs for the same reason. Again, it uh, prevents a dog from trying to hoard all of it. Uh, we use these pack feedings to uh, develop and maintain a healthy pack hierarchy. It puts the dogs in a stressful situation with a high value food item and teaches them how to communicate, uh, which when we go out on our hikes and they encounter unfriendly dogs, it keeps their uh, fight or flight response from being automatically stimulated. Let's let the pack out. Toki 
turkey. He's got that big turkey back. <laughs> Ryuk says, nah, I like that. And again, because there's so much food around, the dogs don't really care when something like that happens because there, there's plenty around for everybody. Right here we have my rescue dog, Ryuk. Gergen always likes to come over and tell me thanks for the food. Oh, good boy. Happy Thanksgiving, buddy. We start uh, touching and handling them from a, a very young age. Again, it teaches them not to be food aggressive. I mean, I can pet and touch all of them. Again, it's good to touch and handle them. Teach them not to be food aggressive. We want to teach them that uh, I'm not a challenge for his food. I've already given him the food. I want them uh, to be desensitized to human touch when eating. We don't want them to get tense and put them in that frame of mind. Again, that's not aggression, that's canine communication. That's Ukla telling Ryuk, hey, that's, that's my fish. Respect him. Ryuk saw that and turned around and went back to his. A lot of people will mistake that for aggression and they'll stop that. And uh, what it does is it, it fosters resent between the dogs involved. They never get a chance to work that out. And then that resentment builds and builds and eventually will turn into a full-fledged fight instead of just a little canine bitching like you saw there. Good boy, Ryuk. And again, you can't, you see Ryuk here, even as a high content wolf dog. What's he not doing? He's not getting tense when I'm touching him and getting protective. And again, it's because I've desensitized him to human touch while he's eating, and that's, that's, that's very important. piece of food. Happy Thanksgiving. Are you giving that to me? I think he just gave that to me. Well, thank you. You can have it though, buddy. You can have it. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody watching this. We hope you enjoyed our uh, Thanksgiving Day pack feeding. That's all. Like, subscribe, and share. Bye from myself, Mr. Kurgan, and the rest of the pack. And if you enjoyed this episode of Life of Wolf Dog, then be sure to give us a big thumbs up. You can check out Jessica's website, which I will put at the bottom of the screen. You can find out everything about the character of wolf dogs and baby Kamala. Loads of photos on her Instagram. And be sure to tune in every single week where I'll be following Kamala all the way up until she's an adult. If you've missed any of the previous episodes, you can click on the info bars and you can go back and you can watch her when she was younger and really, really, really sweet. And until then, we will see you, oh, bye-bye, <laughs> next time. Bye for now. Bye-bye.